Tikodri Tokboy is my name. I have others attached to it, Sandy Stevens. Yeah. I, I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering. Uh, I have been a deputy vice chancellor of Makere University before I was moved into cabinet as the Minister of State for Higher Education, Science and Technology. Yeah. Hopefully that will become a whole ministry on, on its own. Yeah. Now, my relationship with this yeah. is that somewhere in 2007, we resolved that it was not enough for us to go to classrooms with these wonderful students, yeah. deliver them the lecture notes, the formulas, and they stop there. We wanted to start realizing uh, some of those formulas in actual product forms. So we look for the interactive, if you like, students, those who would engage in discussions, who were active in the class and so forth. And they started so relating our formulas to actual objects and so forth. Uh, fortunately, these were very bright students. And very soon, it got known, I think, somewhere in the US, that there were groups of young people engaging in this kind of uh, hands-on activities. And that way, we got invitation to participate in uh, a vehicle design project, which was then uh, led by MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. The result of that engagement was a vehicle you may have seen, you know, Vision 200. Uh, which we built in 2008 while we were in Torino. That year, the uh, capital design capital of the world. And that exercise really prompted us to go further because it showed us that we had the capability, we had the skills, and the problem, all we needed was discipline. On the return, we then resolved to design our own car, build it as a proof of concept. You probably have seen it, the lime green car. And uh, when the president came to launch and said he was going to support us, he said, OK, let's demonstrate you are building real cars that can cover long distances. That is how we now incorporated the hybrid nature in our original concept and the produced Kira Smart, which we exhibited in Nairobi in November 2014. Okay. Alongside, we wanted to address the uh, issue of uh, public transportation more so in cities. And we already realized that here we have the sun running maximum, you know, at least eight hours of intense sun a day throughout the year. So we said, why don't we derive the energy to use to complement what an electric car bus will do? And it is the incorporation of that, those two sources of energy, if you like, together with the battery, that we put on this bus, which is moving this now but what really this means is that in our educational system we should change the manner in which we prepare our young people it's not enough to have these students have a degree a certificate at the end when this degree does not in terms of the content reflect the capability of this so any student who has gone through this scheme and shows you the certificate you can be sure that students got the skills to be able to have project or create some employment opportunities for himself himself. No. Now, when we talk about now transforming the educational system in this country, it's a much, much bigger problem. It's a problem of system. You see, right from the colonial times, because there were a lot of jobs in, uh, the, in the public sector, public service, and also the, if you like, the engineering this, uh, sectors had uh, an arrangement where even if you were theoretical from the university, you had two years of apprenticeship through which you would be taken before you would be called an engineer and so forth. Uh, it didn't so much matter at that time. But over the years, when the private privatization came in, with a lot of this going to the private sector. The private sector does not have the patience or the time to get a theoretical person to take him or her through. The two years of apprenticeship is expensive, okay? So that is basically the problem. It therefore means 
what was being done during the apprenticeship must be done, be done during the time the student is on the campus. It must be, you know, you must uh, infuse the internship and so forth as an ongoing program, you know, in this, in this curriculum. Okay? And uh, it's not enough to start from the university. Okay? Uh, our own primary uh, curriculum, the second curriculum, is not good enough. A curriculum that at the end of Form, five, uh, form 6 pits someone who is called purely arts, purely sciences. That curriculum is no good. So we must reconstruct our curriculum and provide environment. So that right from the primary school, the kid is everywhere, okay? He's playing around with toys, trying to understand this. He's exhibiting talent in terms of maybe music and, and what have you. And in my view, this should go on until a kid is 18, which is about the time the kid is leaving at six. At that point, yes, the kid can then say, I've had this grooming in both the social sciences, humanities, and so forth. Now I'm going to focus in engineering, in medicine, in law, and so forth. Until we overhaul that structure, we will not transform it. No, you see, the normal complaint in universities is that there are no funds for research and so forth. So I think the, these ministers must uh, ask or must engage their corresponding ministers of finance so that funds are provided you know, for supporting research okay, and, and development in our higher institutions of learning. And I still think that um, this idea that everybody must go to university is not the best way to go. Okay? The market does not require everybody to go to the university. And going to the university does not necessarily provide all the skills you need for, for that sector. So after, say, the Form 6, if my colleagues could provide channels, say, at a tertiary level, to go into vocational. But this vocational institution must be well equipped, you know, so that the time the students spend there is used for skilling and so forth. And uh, applying this across the, you know, the boundaries and so forth, I think will deliver this African community from there. Uh, this local competition that, I don't know, Kenya, Uganda, I think that's not the way to go, okay? We should try and see how to harmonize, how to really create opportunities where maybe a Kenyan student would come to study in a particular type of environment here, and uh, a Ugandan one goes across. The competitions between uh, institutions, productive as it is, but I think the areas where we need to collaborate and, you know.